Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy VII. In the last part, we got to the North prison. Corral and Golden Saucer and found ourselves in prison. It's not Mr. the first Cuts. time or the last time this will happen in the series. And we need to get out of here. And talking to Mr. Coates here, who is sort of the boss around here, the only way we can get back up to the surface level of the Golden Saucer is to win a chocobo race. However, to get into that race, we need to get the permission from the boss. And since Mr. Coates isn't the boss, we have to go find him. Huh. So who's the boss? Coates is, right? Well, nope. It's someone else, and they don't quite say it outright, but it's it's Dime. Right. Yeah. So we need to go and find him to not only hopefully have him join us, but to get past that whole blockade over there. Now, this section can be a bit weird with getting around because if you don't do certain things in the right order, sometimes I find this guy won't be dead at the right time, if that makes sense, because I think you need to talk to Mr. Coach for this guy to get shot. I got lost in here so much. Are you, are you gonna, are you gonna try and find the Cactar out here? You can find the Cactar? Pretty sure you can. I, I did not know that if you can. However, one thing I do want to find is in this area in particular. I want to walk around here and look for one specific enemy. Yep. And this should be it. This is the Death Claw. Returning enemy from I think Final Fantasy V is where these things started to show up. 400 HP, 96 EXP, 10 AP, 168 Gil. You can steal Platinum Bangles and they can drop High Potions. Nothing really special otherwise. However, we want to use Manipulate on them. Manipulate, as I mentioned last part, allows you to take control of an enemy. And in this case, I want to use their laser ability on Cloud and Tifa since they have the enemy skill materials, as this is our next enemy skill. It does gravity-based damage, I believe. Hmm. So, I can actually go over the Cactar right now. The Cactar is found in the Corel Prison Desert Area. It's very rare, confined to this... Uh, one desert area and compromising one eighth of the encounters, the other seven of eight being landworms. Wow, that's rare. 200 HP, 20 MP, 1 XP, 1 AP, 10,000 gil, immune to everything except for poison and wind. A thousand needles, you can use it for manipulate. Uh, oh, wait, it's immune to manipulate. Dang. Yeah, because uh, a thousand needles is not an enemy skill in this game. Now, uh, okay, here we are. Laser does half of the target's current HP, so that is potentially useful if they're not immune to gravity. However, more importantly, Cloud got access to his, I think, first level, no, second level two limit break, Clem Hazard, which is a single target one. I believe how it works is that it does four, about four and a half times normal damage to an enemy. So good. Yeah, it's powerful. It's also his up B in Smash. And there's Dime. Oh, he's limping. Oh. Okay. Okay. Whoa. Now, something I can't tell exactly with the just due to the graphics is I can't tell if Dime is shooting Barrett or if he's shooting like past his head. I thought maybe shooting blanks. No, I doubt he's shooting blanks. There's a couple things he could be doing here. I think he's probably shooting past the head, but I wouldn't be surprised if he also is trying to, like, shoot him in, like, the foot. Whoa. Whoa. Well, you've become a nihilist since the last time we saw you. Uh, actually, maybe you're anarchist. <laughs> People of the city, okay. The city itself. I think he's shooting at Barrett, because Barrett stiffens yeah, up yeah. when he shoots him. But Marlene is still alive, and this is where we essentially learn Marlene is not Barrett's daughter by birth. He's raised her, but her. Birth father is dying. Hmm. 
And Barrett's trying to use that to appeal to him. Uh, what, dad battle? What? Oh! Oh. Uh Dime, Whoa, that's... you're talking about killing a child who's also your daughter. That's really f***ed up. That is really bad. And of course, because that's his daughter in line, Barrett's stepping in in a one-on-one -on -one boss fight. Okay, Dine. 1200 HP, 20 MP, 600 XP, 55 AP, 750 gil. Uh, immune to gravity, everything else is pretty, uh, pretty basic. He drops a silver armlet once he's defeated. Uh, he uses Molotov, which is pretty strong. Dine will usually, uh, use something called S-Mine if his HP is between 75 and 50% of his max HP. Uh, he'll use Needle Gun every now and then when his HP is below 50%. Which I believe is, in a way, supposed to be his limit break. Yes. Uh, he also has Cure... Let's see. Do, 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 do. I think he said he has Cure here. No, he's got Needle Gun... Oh, he has Fire. That's what I was missing out on. He has Fire. The base strategy with this is just to sort of go all out. Maybe if Barry gets Limit Break, use it, just because God build those up. However, uh, I forget if I actually did it for this fight or not. What I could recommend as well, uh, put the enemy skill material that has beta onto Barrett and just go all out with that, because that'll probably take him out in two to three shots. Molotov Cocktail is pretty strong. I, I think I had it wrong. I think Molotov is supposed to be his uh, limit break. And that's it. Not a hard fight. However, the fact that it's one-on-one -on -one means you need to keep more of an eye on your HP and be a bit more conservative when it comes to your healing. Yeah, I died against this fight my first time playing this game. Or rather, more liberal when it comes to your healing. Not conservative. Conservative means you're not healing as much. Conservative with your HP, maybe? There you go. So that knocks some sense into you? With bullets? Now, one thing I really hope they keep about this scene in the remake is something that I think the FF6 remake screwed up with during the Phantom Train sequence. It's really quiet here. I really hope they don't play some overdramatic music here in the remake. Yeah. Silence is sometimes the best form of music. Because, you know, I think I've talked to you about that scene in 6 where they play the Phantom Train theme when it's leaving in 6. Uh, no, it's silent, isn't it? In, not in the Game Boy Advance version, the GBA version, they start playing the song again. Gross. Which some people have interpreted as the Phantom Train having the last laugh because it's taking uh, Cyan's family with it. But I just think that's a programming mishap. And I, he throw us Marlene's mother's thing. Dine, what are you doing? Symbolic death. Oh my. And there he goes. Holy shit. You know, we've talked about how some characters get beat up pretty badly in this game. Barrett, in particular, really gets it hard throughout this one. Because not only does he lose all of his friends in Avalanche, he loses his entire group of people that he knows, probably, in Sector 7. And he feels the guilt from that. But now this... And the entire Corel sequencing. Yeah, the whole, it's, he's a very dark character. I'm trying, there's not, now that I'm thinking about it, there's not even a really a single character in this game who doesn't have at least some, like, notable, somewhat realistic damage. I know I say somewhat realistic in a game where people can throw fire out of their hands, but you know what I mean. Like, understandable, instead of, like, over the top. But since Dine's out of the way, Mr. Coates is like, yeah, you can, you can head on up. To do that joke about race thing, I should specify. Now, the thing is with this joke about race thing, and you've probably seen the, the episode I'm talking about. Uh, are you aware of Boundary Break at all, Kenny? No. It's this little, uh, not little, it's over 100 episodes at this point, YouTube series by a guy, I think they, I think his YouTube name is She Says. Mm. Uh, or She Says, I forget which one it was supposed to be. 
But he did one on seven, and a lot of the time it was just him showing like some behind the scenes geometry, some some sprites or FMB stuff that's not quite loaded and such. But one thing that is in the game's program but never used is you remember the caged door outside in the outer portion of Coral Prison to the left above where this place is? Uh -huh. There is a sprite of that thing, or at least an altered background, of it opening up, meaning that I'm thinking at some point you were implied to be able to come back down here, but we never do. Hmm. Now this is Esther. She is part of the Chocobo racing portion of Gold Saucer. She is essentially here to be our agent for this race. And she's also going to give us a little explanation on Chocobo racing right here, right now. So let's learn how to ride our Chocobo. Select button selects auto or manual steering. So always use manual because the Chocobo does not run on its own that well at this point in the game. Chocobos have uh, speeds. You can press square to speed up, X to slow down, D-pads and uh, just outright movement. Circle will boost you forward. However, they also have a stamina meter to keep in line. And there is something very special about that that we're going to be able to do. Something special? Maybe it's something exploitable I've never heard about until now. Sort of. This is Joe. Joe is the speed racer of Tokubo jockeys. He is the best. Top of the line. To the point where uh, eventually you can do Chocobo Racing as a minigame, and we'll go more into that later. But in the case Joe shows up, especially at lower ranks, you are probably losing to him and Teo. I mean, he even, I mean even, at the, even, even at the higher ranks, like, even if you have um, something that's equal to or better than his Chocobo, you might still lose. Yep, and we want to grab the Rama material there, because it's the only place in the game I think you can get it. So if you don't get it here, you, I think you might lose out on it forever, barring one potential place you might be able to get it again. Which is a place you can get a couple of material you may have missed out on throughout the game. So now we're going to head on out. I can't leave through the door. Come on. Do I have to watch you all leave? Wow, that's an old computer. <laughs> 1997. Yo, Esther, can I uh, get some help here? There she is. There okay. you are. So we're registered, and it's time for our chance to escape. Yeah, we got it. Oh, Chocobos. Chocobo Racing. The, get used to this song. All right, starting off, press select to head to manual since you don't want to use auto. Auto is awful. Uh, what you want to do throughout the entire race is hold the square button to have a higher boost of speed. You can press circle liberally to get some extra boost. But as you can see, that eats up our stamina meter on the left side of the screen pretty quickly. However, you might notice it's also seeming like it's trying to fight back and rise a little bit. Something the game doesn't tell you about is that if you hold R1 and R2, your stamina meter restores slowly. Uh, it depends on your Chocobo's individual stats for how fast it recovers, but that is going to be helpful when it comes to keeping your speed up. Oh, interesting. Okay. I need to find what my configurations are for that on the Steam version. I think it's page up and page down. Don't quote me on that, though. I, I, Because I, I've seen some people do streams of the PC version. I recall them having that exact issue. This first race here is more or less a gimme. I've never lost this, so I'm not even sure what happens if you lose. But just get ahead at the start and then just hold the square button. Only use boost if someone looks like they're coming right up on your ass. And you should win pretty easily. I don't like how slow that space section is. It hurts. Yeah, it's slow. And we even get the classic Final Fantasy victory for doing that. However notable, you can't exit the race until someone gets second uh, place. And Dio gave us a letter. Let's see what he said. We must have won and have won a victory we assured, blah, blah, blah. Got a full pardon and we were set free. And since we were incriminated falsely... He's giving us a parting gift. That's nice. He gave us a car! And by that I mean a buggy. A brand new car! <laughs> and he met Sephiroth. And he's alive? Now he's heading south of the river towards Gangaga. Thank you for that direction, Dio. 
He must have a lot of fans. I'll make sure to resist the JoJo jokes for that. Ugh. And I'll just bring in the party I have right now. Because they have the material layout. The buggy controls fairly standardly. You just press the D-pad to move around and stuff. It can cross shower level, shallow rivers and deserts. So you can get back to Costa del Sol even. However, with it, we can also go back to most previous areas of the game and, like I'm doing right now, run around a little bit to find some new enemies with enemy skills. For instance, the Harpy has 800 HP, 148 XP, 14 AP, 210 Gil, no elemental weaknesses, you can steal a striking staff or get a high potion drop from it. The thing we want to do is manipulate it because it has the Aqua Lung enemy skill for us, which is essentially a uh, uh, water elemental beta spell. I think it costs a little more, but the water element is a bit rarer in the game anyway. It does a lot of damage. Yeah, it's gonna be very useful. It's all, It could be useful for limit break grinding. Yeah, uh, at least for the first, or like not the first level, but early level stuff. Yeah, uh, sure. Once you get to the point where you're getting probably level 3, it's probably a bit much. And I can show off Clint Hazard. I wanted to, uh... Ow. I wanted to talk about, uh... The buggy in this game and how it's better than the one in 8. Because in 8 you have to buy fuel. And in this one it runs infinitely. And plus, don't you, in The cars in 8, don't you have to stay on the road? Yes, you do. Eh. That's one of those choices of 8 I'm not a big fan of. There's a lot of those, to be fair, though. At this point, I also want to cross the lever back towards Costa del Sol and run around on this beach. Because there's another enemy with an enemy skill where I'm going to be finding around here. In fact, we're going to be doing a bit of backtracking here at the start or of us being back in the world map just so we can get some enemy skills. So we've got beach plugs now. They have 200 HP, 100 MP, 95 XP, 10 AP, 155 gil, half damage to, uh, from ice, but you can manipulate them to have the big guard ability placed on you, which is very good. I think big guard is essentially mighty guard. Yes, uh, big guard inflicts haste, barrier, and M barrier on the party. And that is really good. However, uh, in the, I, I very often have beach plugs show up in this formation where uh, it's a pincer attack. And because of that, wow, that's loud. Uh, I have to use big guard twice. And I don't think they have enough MP to use Big Guard twice. So, I had to come back and get it a second time, I think. You could chuck an ether at it. I could, but that's that, that that's 750 MP. I don't want to... Uh, 750 gold. I don't want to waste, Kenny. You can just grind. I know, but c c come on, man. It's, you got it's literally videos. 400 gil just from that fight. The ether will I pay for itself. But Big Guard, is, or Mighty Guard, is going to be one we're going to be using... I don't know, yeah, Big Guard is going to be one we're going to be using a good bit through the game. And now for something that I didn't know about the game for quite a few years. If you drive the buggy into Costa del Sol and talk to this soldier right next to the Shinra boat, you can take it over to the first continent. It takes 100 gil, but we can get back to June really easily this way. Huh. In fact, this is how they want you to get back to... Oh, I have to walk. Uh, want you to get back to... Fort Condor for further battles. In fact, if you're doing all the Fort Condor battles, another one has opened up at this point in the game. Uh, the prize for that is a Mega Elixir. And you don't need a Mega Elixir. Again, though, it's only a Mega Elixir if you do them all in sequence. If you didn't do the previous one, it would be three others. <laughs> we also need to watch this cutscene every time we do this, so make sure you do this only if you absolutely need to. Hmm. Dang. Though I I do this I think twice throughout the game, and that's uh, we have to we have to watch this cutscene on the way back and forth. Although I think I cut back to the other side eventually. Now we do need to walk outside of Junin again. However, they do at least give us some remedy to that. Oh God, it's still playing. Oh no. Oh, why is it still playing? Is it just the Junon Town City theme at this point? Rufus, you're not here. But they do give us some little help. We can have this guy call over a helicopter, which can take us to a couple places. Either to the east side of town, where uh, the little locker room was, or just outside the town, period. Also, hello, reused helicopter model. 
Outside of town just takes you to the world map, right? Yes, it does. Thank God. And here we get to see that the buggy came with us. That helicopter carried a whole buggy thing. I guess it did. And this doesn't allow us to access too much more to this side. This is mostly just so I could have it with me. But there is one thing I can do with this now that we weren't able to do prior. You're trying to find a specific enemy, aren't you? Yes, but I also want to cross this river up here as soon as I... There it is. There is a little cave over here that isn't too important in the long scheme of things, but I want to show off. This man has a couple different things he can say, but the most important one is how many times you've escaped. You want to get it so that the last two digits of that are matching, either odd or even. When they're, I believe it's when they're even, he gives you the bolt ring, which I think reduces damage from static type attacks. And when they're the other one, whichever one it may be, he gives us, I think the more important thing, the mithril. That is a key item that we won't be able to use until towards the end of disc one, hmm. but it's going to be important to have. I don't know about that. I'll have to play the game and find out. And now we just want to run around in a circle because the enemy I am looking for now is in this area. And as what we've seen before, it is the Zemzalit from, I think, two or three parts ago now? Something like that, but... Uh, now that we have Manipulate, we can manipulate it and learn the White Wind enemy skill from it. The best enemy skill in the game, by the way. Yeah, White Wind is kind of broken. Uh, it restores HP, I believe, equivalent to the user's current HP to everyone in the party, as well as restores them from any status ailment. Correct. Excluding death. It is pretty busted. Uh, I don't use it too much, not because I don't find it useful, it's just the fact I, I don't think about using it too often. Really? I use it a lot, just as um, a replacement for... Uh, at least until I get the a specific materia in the late game, uh, I'm, I use White Wind a lot. White Wind is useful. It's just one of those things that I forget I have, I guess is the way I want to put it. Because I'm always focusing more on just standard cure magic. And enemy skill materia, whenever I have an enemy skill materia, I'm usually using it to focus on attacks like beta. And at this point, I'm also going back throughout the previous areas in the game, all the way back to right outside Midgar, to learn every single enemy skill that I've learned thus far in the game, including beta, for every... for the other enemy skill materia. <laughs> sure. Ah, Mushroom cloud good. explosion. And this is what my setup's looking like for right now, because we're going to be heading on to the next... Not major area, but it's a it's a notable area, and you want to have a decent material set up for a potential boss fight in there. Now, I, another re th reason I think they really intended you to be able to go back to the uh, Corel Prison, you can see it on the world map right below the Gold Saucer, which makes me think they maybe intended you to maybe be able to use the buggy to enter it at some point or another, but again, what would be the purpose of heading there? Welcome to the Gongaga Oh my area. god, so that's the purpose of the Mithril in this game. Huh. Yep. Oh, wow. Hi, Reno. How you doing? Who's your right hand man? I, I do like this conversation because they talk about who they like, and there is a notable element to this. Sung likes the ancient... Oh, god. He has a thing for Aerith. <laughs> oh, hi, oh, Elena. Hi, Elena. I like how casual she can be with us, even though she realizes, oh, it's us. Yeah, we made it. And, yeah, she's just going to go report to Sung, who is, I guess, over in that direction. Sector 7? Yeah, how about you just get out of our way? Time for a boss fight against Reno and Rude together. Uh, notable thing about this fight... Uh, I believe the way it works is the more you take out one of their HP, they both go out, so I want to use multi-targeting attacks like oh. Aqualung and Beta off the bat. 
Uh, the first thing we have to do, Reno has 2,000 HP, 660 XP, 60 AP, and 1,500 Gil, no real weaknesses. He also doesn't have Pyramid anymore. Uh, Rude has 2,000 HP, 135 MP, 720 XP, 70 AP, and 2,000 Gil. Uh, nothing too special. Now, the more important person, if you're just trying to get, like, the best item output, because I want to kill them just so I can get both of their items... Reno is the one you want to take out because he'll drop the fairy tail. However, Reno or Rude will drop an X potion, which is still pretty good at this point in the game. Now, the noble thing I wanted to mention, you, that little cover. Actually, no, he stopped, I think. Uh, you remember how a moment ago Rude was talking about how he liked Tifa? That even goes into the gameplay. If there's characters that aren't Tifa still standing, he will not attack her at all. Is it like the Black Waltz number three that doesn't that <clears throat> doesn't attack Garnet? I think. Uh, let's see. Fairy Tail is a weapon for Aerith, and it's one of her best ones. Uh, seven unlinked materia slots, normal materia growth. Good. Now we can head towards the northwest, but I want to head this way because there's an enemy encounter apparently. Whoa, that's a dinosaur tank. That's cool. This is the heavy tank. 1600 HP, 340 XP, 45 AP, 1300 gil. No elemental weaknesses, can steal Phoenix sounds, and they can drop high potions. This guy is basically just a big buff boy. He can do decent damage with, like, wheelie attack, big spiral and such. He also does, I think, a good amount of multi-targeting attacks. Mm -hmm. But I'm just gonna have the power of Zeus smite him. He's useful for other things later in the game. He is? Yes. Not that I'm aware of. I guess I'll explain that when the time comes. Oh, well, I mean, I can just explain it now. Power source. Uh, oh, really? Oh, okay. Uh, I get what you mean now. <laughs> I, I forgot about that. Yeah. The 1600 HP can be a bit foreboding as a standard encounter in this area, though, because that's essentially boss fight level at this point. But if you're well set up, you don't have much to fear. Oh, this thing looks like a big hunk of metal. <laughs> Maybe an old reactor? A ruined reactor. Yowza, what, hell, what the hell happened here? Hojo. <laughs> yes, Hojo looked at it, shot eye beams out of his eyes, <laughs> and it exploded. Yes. <laughs> now there's Sung and Scarlet. Wait, how'd Alina know he was over here if he wasn't here by helicopter yet? Junkie materia from Junkie Reactor. So there's a materia in there? Hmm. <laughs> Big, large, huge materia. Oh, that sounds just interesting. Eh, I doubt it'll come back. And yeah, this is where the outright confirm Hojo has left Shinra at this point. Good for him. Good decision. I don't know. That means that he's out there unpredictable, so that might not be good. True, yeah. true. Now, this scene isn't too important. In fact, this, this entire little sequence here is optional. In fact, I think Gungaga in general is optional. But I do want to come up here and see this scene, not only for that little bit of extra exposition, but also if we check where Elena was just looking at in the metal here. Oh, uh, that's Scarlet. <laughs> oh, sorry, Scarlet. <laughs> Titan. We can find the Titan Materia, which is an Earth Elemental Summon Materia. That's not junky. Not as useful as the Quake Spell. Yeah, it's not junky at all. It's pretty good, although, again, I don't find summons that useful in this game overall. However, I now want to head to the northwest, and right here we find something that's, I believe, pretty important. The Death, Death Blow, Blow Materia. And that acts as a guaranteed critical hit if it hits. It has a lower accuracy. Oh, now I have to go over this enemy. This enemy has probably the worst name in the entire series. Touch me. 300 HP, 74 MP, 170 XP, 23 AP, 180 Gil. Uh, it can use Frog Song, which puts 
uh, characters to sleep and puts them also in toad status. So, Matra Magic is probably the best way to go, since it doesn't have a whole lot of HP. Yeah. Uh, something I've noticed over the years, I think the enemy script confirms this to some extent. Uh, Touch Me will more likely counter with Frog Song if you use a magic attack on it, uh, and it'll more likely counter with Frog Punch if you use a physical attack. There's a 1 in 5 chance that it counters magic with Frog Song. All right, cool. And this is Gong Gaga Town. Uh, also notable, the Touch Me can uh, have an Impaler stolen from it. That is a status item that causes Toad. I think they imply that they want you to go to the town first and then the reactor. Because he comments on seeing the ruined reactor. And this town's been through some shit. Because after the reactor exploded, they voted to even ban the stuff in the area. Uh, time magic is haste and slow, not too useful. I mean, haste is useful, but Mighty Guard is a better way to get it. What's your story? That's a pretty short story. Yeah. Uh, there are some items, I think, that are technically better here if you haven't done some stealing throughout the game, mm -hmm. but again, I've done that. Gungaga is a pretty good point in the game if you haven't been stealing to get some upgrades. Stealing is great. There's also just some treasure here that we want to grab. A white megaphone. That is a weapon for Ketch She. Uh, we'll catch these weapons are all megaphones. They do... I, I guess what they're supposed to be doing is uh, uh, issuing more precise demands to the Mog. But, uh, again, Ketchy is not a very useful party member, so he's not going to be doing much physical attacking. If he's ever in your party, I'd recommend using him for magic, because I think his magic stat's okay. I never use him, so I wouldn't know. I I try to use him a bit more in this LP than I usually do, and by that I mean using him, using him like two or three times. <laughs> but uh, you'll be seeing me use essentially every other character so much more. I'll show off his limit breaks later on, but... They suck. Yeah. Shoutouts to Death Joker. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I wasn't soldier. Uh, your son? Zack. Huh. Huh. I don't know why, but that name sounds familiar. Yeah, I don't think I can recall Zack and Soldier, though. Maybe he left before I got in there. Aerith seems to know him. Oh, was that your boyfriend, Aerith? Oh. Does Tifa know him, too? Do you know him? Bizarre. Now, what happened to them? He hasn't contacted you in 10 years. Jesus. Whoa. All right. So there is some relationship value stuff going on right here. Uh, if they're in the party, uh, ignoring them at this point will make them lose three points. Uh, talking to Tifa gives her a plus one no matter what you respond with. Talking to Aerith, though, is going to give us a choice. If you say poor guy, it's going to be plus one to her. And if you say, and I guess it's supposed to be Claude muttering, jealous, envious, it'll give her plus two. Uh, so my, I think my strategy here is to talk to Tifa and ignore Aerith, I believe. Though at this point, I think Tifa's so far ahead that I might talk to her anyway. Yeah, I do. But yeah, this is where her boyfriend was from. Wonder where he is. And Cloud brings up a good point. First class is, like, the exclusive of exclusives <laughs> in skill. Like, if I'm recalling correctly, Crisis Core stated that there's, like, less than 20 first class soldiers or somewhere around there. So, Cloud not knowing him, unlikely, but I guess if he left before Cloud got in, it's possible. Possibly. You feel for his parents? Man, if only we knew what happened to him. Eh, that might get explored later on. I guess we'll see. Maybe. But with that, we're going to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching. And in part 13, now that we're done with Gangaga, we're going to head along the coastline towards the north to see what areas await us there. See, see you guys, guys then. then.